It was a nice summer day. My five-year-old son, James, was playing outside in the backyard of our suburban home. James has always been a quiet boy. He plays by himself, mostly. He never had many friends. But he's always had a wild imagination. I was in the kitchen feeding our dog, Fido, when I heard what sounded like James talking to someone in the backyard. I'm not sure who it could be that he was talking to. Could he have finally made a friend? Being a single dad, it's hard for me to always keep an eye on my son, so I decided to go outside and check on him. When I went out into the backyard, I was a bit confused because James was the only person back there. Was he talking to himself? I could have sworn I heard another voice. James! It's time to come inside! I called out to him. He came inside and sat down at the kitchen table. It was about lunchtime, so I decided to make him a turkey sandwich. James, who are you talking to out there? I asked. James looked up for a moment. I was playing with my new friend, he said, smiling. I poured some milk and continued to pry, as any good father would. Does your friend have a name? Why didn't you, uh, ask him to have lunch with us? I asked. James stared at me for a moment before replying. His name is Laughing Jack. I was a bit taken aback by what he said. Oh? That's a strange name. What does your friend look like? I asked, a bit confused. He's a clown. He has long hair and a big swirly cone nose. He's got long arms and baggy pants with striped socks. He always smiles. I realized my son was talking about an imaginary friend. I suppose it was normal for kids his age to have imaginary friends, especially when he has no real kids to play with. It's probably just a phase. The rest of the day went as usual, and it was starting to get late, so I put James to bed, tucked him in, gave him a kiss, and made sure to turn on his nightlight before I closed the door. I was pretty tired myself, so I decided to go to bed not long after. I had an awful nightmare. It was dark. I was in some kind of a run-down amusement park. I was scared, running through an endless field of empty tents, broken down rides, and abandoned game hunts. The whole place had a horrible look to it. Everything was black and white. The prized stuffed animals all hung from nooses in the game huts, all with sick grins stitched into their faces. It felt like the whole park was looking at me, even though there wasn't any living thing in sight. And then suddenly, I began to hear music play. The sounds of Pop Goes the Weasel being played on a squeak box echoed through the park. It was hypnotizing. I followed its tune to the circus tent almost in a trance, unable to stop my legs from moving forward. It was pitch black. The only light came from a single spotlight shining on the center of the big top. As I walked, as I walked towards the light, the music slowed down. I found myself singing along, unable to stop. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought was all in fun. And the music stopped right before its climax. And suddenly, the light shot on. The intensity of the light was practically blinding. All I could see was a small dark silhouette shuffle towards me. Then another one appeared. And... and another? And another. There was a dozen of them, all coming towards me. I couldn't move. My legs were frozen, and all I could do was watch as the haunting figures drew near me. As they got closer, I could see... They were children. As I looked at each one, I noticed that they were all horribly disfigured and mutilated. Some had cuts all over their bodies, others were severely burned, and others were missing limbs. Even eyes. The children enveloped me, clawing at my flesh, dragging me to the ground, and tearing inside me. As the children tore me apart, and I faded away, all I could hear was laughter. Horrible. Evil. Awful. Laughter.
I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat. After taking a few deep breaths, I looked over and saw that a few of James's action figures were positioned facing me on the top of my nightstand. I sighed. James had probably woken up early and put these here. I gathered up the toys, made my way over to James's room. However, when I opened the door, James was sound asleep. I just shrugged and placed the toys back in his toy box, headed out to the living room. A little while later, James woke up and I made him breakfast. He was quiet, seemed a bit groggy, perhaps he didn't sleep very well. I decided to ask him about the toys. And James, honey, did you put the toys in Dad's room this morning? His eyes shot up at me for a moment, and then quickly glanced down at his cereal. Laughing Jack did it. I rolled my eyes and responded, Well, you tell Laughing Jack to keep the toys in your room. James nodded and finished up his breakfast, then decided to go out and play in the backyard. I went to relax in the living room and must have dozed off because I woke up a couple hours later. SHIT! I need to go check on James. I was a bit worried that it had been over two hours and I hadn't checked on him. I stepped out into the backyard, but James wasn't there anymore. Oh, I was getting nervous, so I called him out. James! James, where are you? Just then, I heard a giggle coming from the front yard. I rushed through the gate and around the front of the house. James was sitting on the sidewalk. I breathed a sigh of relief and walked over to him. James, how many times have I told you to stay in the back? James, what are you eating? James looked up at me and then reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of hard candies in all colors. This made me very nervous. James, who gave you that candy? James just stared at me, not speaking. James, tell Dad who gave you that candy. James hung his head low and said, Laughing Jack gave it to me. My heart sunk. I knelt down and looked him in the eye. James, I've had enough of this damn Laughing Jack thing. He's not real. Now, this is a very serious situation. I need to know who gave you that candy. I could see my son's eyes tearing up. But Dad, Laughing Jack did give me the candy. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. James had never lied to me, but what he's telling me is impossible. I made him spit out the candy and throw the rest away. James appeared to be fine. Maybe I'm just overreacting. After all, he could have gotten it from Tom and Linda from next door, or Mr. Walker down the street. Either way, I'm going to have to keep a closer eye on James. That night, I put James to bed as usual and decided to go to bed early myself. Suddenly, I was awoken by a loud bang coming from the kitchen. I sprung out of bed and hurried down the stairs. When I got to the kitchen, I was horrified. Everything on the counters had been thrown to the floor. Our dog Fido hung dead from the light fixture. His stomach was cut open and stuffed with candy, the same type that James was eating earlier that day. The shock was quickly broken by a sharp scream coming from James's room, followed by loud crashes. I quickly grabbed the knife from the drawer and moved up the stairs with a speed that only a father whose child was in danger could have. I burst through the door and flicked on the lights. Everything in the room was knocked over and tossed to the floor, and my poor son was in his bed crying and shaking with fear. A pool of urine stained the sheets. I scooped up my child and ran out of the house, went next door to Tom and Linda's house, and luckily they were still awake. They let me use the phone to call the police. It didn't take them long to arrive, and I explained what happened. They looked at me as if I was crazy. They searched the house, but all they found was the dead dog and two trashed rooms. The officer told me that someone had probably gotten into the house and done this right before making a quick escape, when they heard me coming up the stairs. I knew it wasn't true. All the doors were locked. None of the windows were open. Whatever was in my house didn't come from outside. The next day, James stayed inside. I didn't want him to leave my sight. I went to the garage, found my old baby monitor, and set it up in his room. If anything comes into his room tonight, I was going to be able to hear it. I went to the kitchen, grabbed the largest knife from the drawer, put it on my nightstand. 
Imaginary friend or not, I'm not letting anything hurt my little boy. And soon enough, night came. I put James to bed. He was afraid, but I promised him that I wouldn't let anything hurt him. I tucked him in, gave him a kiss, turned on the nightlight, and before closing the door, I whispered to him, Good night, James. I love you. I tried to stay up as long as I could, but after a few hours I felt myself drifting off. My baby would be safe for the night, and I needed to sleep. And just as I lay my head down on the pillow, I heard a soft noise come from the baby monitor that I had put on my nightstand. At first it sounded like interference, like, like the kind a radio would make. Then it turned into a soft moan. Was James asleep? Then I heard it. The laugh from my nightmare, that horrible laugh. I sprung up from the bed and grabbed the knife from under my pillow. I rushed over to James's room and creaked the door open. I tried the light switch, but it wouldn't come on. I took a step in and I could feel the warm, thick liquid on my feet. And suddenly, James's nightlight came on and I could see... I... I, I could see the absurd horror laid out in front of me. James's body was nailed up on the wall. The nails pierced through his hands and feet and his chest was... And his chest was cut wide open and his... His organs hung down to the floor and his eyes and tongue had been removed along with most of his teeth and I was disgusted. I could hardly believe that this was my baby boy. And then I heard it again. That soft, desperate moan. God. James was still alive! My... My baby, my poor boy, in such pain, could barely cling to life, and I ran across the room and I, I vomited on the floor, but my sickness was interrupted by a horrible cackle coming from behind me, and I spun around, and while I was still wiping bile from my mouth, then out of the shadows emerged the fiend responsible for the horror. <laughs> Laughing Jack. His ghost white skin and matted black hair hung down to his shoulders. He had piercing white eyes surrounded by black rings. <laughs> His twisted smile revealed His twisted smile revealed a row of sharp, jagged teeth, and his skin didn't look like skin at all. It almost looked like rubber or plastic. He wore a, a, a patchy black and white clown outfit with striped sleeves and socks. His body its it, itself was grotesque. His long arms hung down past his waist. The way he was poised made him look almost boneless, like a like a rag doll. He let out he let out a sickening laugh as if to let me know that he was pleased with my reaction to his work. I turned around slowly in front of James and began to laugh even more at the horrific sight that he laid out. That was enough to, that was enough to shake me from my terror and I snapped. Get away from him, you bastard! I rushed at the monster, raised the knife above my head, and stabbed down at him. But as soon as the knife touched him, he disappeared like a cloud of black smoke. The knife passed right through him and pierced James' still beating heart, splashing the warm blood on my face. <laughs> no. What did I what have I done? My baby. I, I, I've killed my baby. I I immediately fell to my knees. I couldn't hear. I, I could hear sirens in the distance growing louder, and my boy, my... My sweet baby, boy. I, I promised. I promised that Daddy would protect you, but... But I, I, I failed. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, James. I, I'm so sorry. Police soon arrived and found me in front of my son, still wielding the knife covered in my baby's blood, and the trial was short. In, in, insanity. I was placed in...
Ferropolis House for the Criminally Insane, where I had been for the past two months. It's, it's not... It's not bad here. The only reason I'm awake now is because someone... Someone is playing Pop Goes the Weasel outside my window. I'll talk to the orderlies about it in the morning.